Pleasure. Just come up to 14 minutes past eight Thursday morning. Now, lung cancer is the most common cause of cancer death in the UK. Two women who know this better than most are Cathy Brokenshire and Fiona Castle. That's because Cathy lost her husband, James Brokenshire, the former Northern Ireland secretary, to the disease. Fiona is the widow, is the widow of the musician and television presenter Roy Castle. Both women are campaigning for a national lung cancer screening programme to be available to everyone, regardless of risk factor or age. Our reporter Zoe Conway was there when they met for the first time. <laughs> Morning, Maggie. It's 1986, and Roy Castle is trying to beat a world record by parascending under 10 London bridges. There we go, we're through. Absolutely magic. Fearless and seemingly always happy. He was the much loved presenter of record breakers for 20 years. And the news is that Roy's a record breaker. <laughs> Someone who remembers watching Roy's programmes growing up Hello. is Cathy Brokenshire. It's one reason why she wanted to meet Fiona Castle. Cathy's husband James died of lung cancer last October. Roy Castle died 27 years ago. So they both now know what it's like to return to an empty home. There are so many facets of it, aren't there? When you've yeah. had an exciting day or something's happened, you go home, I've got nobody no to, to tell. Yeah. Yeah. There's that sort of loneliness about it that yeah. you don't anticipate before, do you? No, I've had family, friends and neighbours have been absolutely incredible. Okay. And, and you really notice it when you're on your own, don't yes, you? Yes, you suddenly do. Yeah, yes. really do. <laughs> Roy Castle and his four children performing together for a Christmas special. He said that one of the hardest things about his cancer diagnosis was telling his family. I had to phone my son in Norway. And as soon as he, he came on the phone. <laughs> Couldn't speak. <laughs> Fiona had to take over. We suddenly realised that what we had, which has always been so super as a, a family, might be coming to an end, and um, there was a lot of sadness there. As Roy Castle endured gruelling treatments, the nation watched. The discipline of keeping still is the hardest part of it. Never before had a public figure been so open about their cancer. He'd never smoked. His case helped bring to light the dangers of passive smoking, and he raised hundreds of thousands of pounds for lung cancer research. Roy never got worried about it. He just took it on and, well, this is the way it is, and, and I'll, I'm going to fight it right to the end, and he did. James Brokenshire was Secretary of State for Northern Ireland when he got his diagnosis. He'd also never smoked. From everything I've seen and experienced, early diagnosis and treatment lies at the heart of this. That's why I believe that a national screening programme for lung cancer is needed. Here, here. A minute's silence for James Brokenshire. He was known as the nicest man in politics. He said to friends, I've had a good life, you know, I've achieved what I've wanted to. I've married an amazing woman and I've got three brilliant kids. I've made a difference. Both Roy and James died some two and a half years after their diagnosis. He died at five in the morning and I tried to phone all my relatives and his relatives so that they wouldn't find out through the press. That was one of the things for me, because it, I knew it was going to happen very quickly. And the morning that James died, again, knowing that it was going to break, I was trying to phone friends, and other friends were phoning other friends, and I, I, will have, I was having people on the phone crying uncontrollably to me and me trying to calm them down and trying to stay strong. Um, After Roy died, Fiona went on a world tour to raise awareness, meeting leaders such as Nelson Mandela. Now it's Cathy's turn to hit the campaign trail. She's meeting Jeff Smith. His lung cancer was caught early, thanks to targeted screening. I got up one morning and I saw a letter on the floor and 
from the NHS. I thought, what's all this about? And he just said that I were having a um, lung cancer screening programme yeah. in Salford uh, for people between 55 and 74. He went for the scan. A tumour measuring nine millimetres was discovered. When Dr Grundy said uh, it's cancer, yeah. I was about well, numb. Yeah. And my brother was numb. But yeah. the next words were, well, you're a success story to this campaign we're doing because we've got it. Mm -hmm. I almost got that letter right at the, the, right the time. Yeah. If they got it a bit later, yeah. God knows. Yes. But it, well, the doctor said in 18 months' time it'd have been a different conversation, yeah, which yeah. was scary. Jeff is an ex-smoker. He lives in an area with a high rate of smoking, which is why he was targeted for the scan. Cathy okay. wants the screening programme to be widened to non-smokers. My husband never smoked, um, so under the current schemes and what's happening under the um, current pilot schemes, he wouldn't even get looked at. But we've got to start somewhere and we've got to start with the high risk people. And as I say, once we get more stories like you, yeah. then we can prove that it works. They were all wearing pairs of Roy's shoes. Can you see? That's his clown. clown <laughs> Cathy and Fiona have so much in common, not least that they were both with their husbands for 31 years. You know, people say, oh, um, only 31 years, but I think I was privileged to have such a lovely person for such and a long time. I'm so glad you say that because I feel that I was blessed to have met him and yes, I was only with James for 31 years and yes, that time was cut short, but he's enriched my life um, and we had a ball. Ready? Let the drums roll out. And now it seems only fitting if the final word goes to Roy Castle. So we come away reporting that, and I don't think you can ever see footage of Roy Castle and not smile. <laughs> not smile <laughs> at it. I, I think yeah. that is brilliant. And with us here, um, you've got Cathy Brokenshire and Fiona Castle as well. It's a pleasure to have you thank, on the thank you. with us thank this you morning. And we've also got Professor David Baldwin, who's consultant respiratory physician. Thank you very much as thank well for coming much. with us. Um, this is so important, that meeting of you, you both. What was that like? What did it feel like? Well, we had so much in common that it was lovely, even though we're very different in ages. Yeah. I'm, I'm old enough to be her mother. Um, but, but just the fact that we had an experience and, and we're both passionate about raising awareness of lung cancer and what we can do to make a difference. And what are you going to do to make a difference? We are calling for national screening. Um, and today we're launching a Twitter campaign, hashtag need to screen um, and we're just passionate about trying to get this national screening. James started the, the sort of fight for it, shall we say. Unfortunately, he's not here and I'm just happy to pick up the mantle. What, what, what was your reaction when you and James discovered that he had lung cancer and he didn't smoke? Because it, it, it's always been the thought, hasn't it? Or generally the perception that yeah. if you smoke, then you're more at risk, but if you don't, you've pretty much negated it. We just took the news on, but it was quite bizarre. Actually, he was Northern Ireland Secretary, uh, and with that came um, police protection. So we went to the hospital, and then uh, we got it. We came out of the consulting rooms, got in the car, and we couldn't talk about it because we were in a car with other people. Um, so we actually had to then wait, and then we had to pick up the children. So it was about five or six hours later by the time we were finally alone to have that conversation, to sort of talk about it. But instantly, I mean, we were told, this is good prognosis, we've caught it early, and we were upbeat, and you just, you have to go with it and see what happens. But it was a small nodule, wasn't it? It was a small nodule. And then that was removed, and then it And that was removed, and sadly, it came back within the pandemic three years later, um, and we are where we are. Professor, do you want to pick up on the, the early diagnosis and the importance, if, if it happens, if, if they get it through, the, the screening? So early diagnosis in lung cancer is incredibly important because if people present with lung cancer, it's often in a late stage. 
uh, more than two-thirds of people present with late-stage lung cancer and sadly when that happens we only cure very few people. Is the reason they present late stage because what they're they're coughing up blood or they've got shortness of breath or tightness well, of chest? Well, it's mainly because the lungs don't feel pain, so you're not aware when you've got something wrong with your lungs from that perspective. Symptoms tend to occur when the cancer's already progressed to a relatively late stage. Uh, we discover sometimes lung cancer early when the symptoms are due to something else, so they get a cough or something like that or breathlessness for some other reason and then we do a scan, we find an early stage lung cancer. That's a sort of incidental detection. Um, but if you screen people, of course, who are at risk of lung cancer, then you, you detect it early. And we know that from the, the science shows us that you detect lots and lots of lung cancer early. Take us through some practicalities. I mean, everything about the, uh, the medicine is about cost. So a screening program, what actually, what actually happens? How are you screened and, and is it expensive? So the first thing's first, that, that how you screened, it's a CT scan for people that are at risk of lung cancer. It's completely painless and it's a very rapid scan that, that uh, happens. So CT scan is a sort of polo mint type scan, very, very quick. You just lie on the table, 40 seconds later, you've had your scan. What did you say, polo mint? The, you know, the big polo mint. It's yeah, oh, right, yeah, so yeah, you yeah. go through the tube right, like we yeah. saw. Yeah. Right, yeah. OK. Yeah. So, um, so that's a CT scanner or CAT scanner. Uh, in terms of cost, well, in the UK we have really tough um, uh, levels to go through to to get screening across the across the line and and for lung cancer it's been really really tough and um, the major argument has been cost effectiveness but the science shows that it is cost effective we have a pilot program in the in England at the moment which James actually was very helpful in getting that back forward going forward uh, it's despite the pandemic um, we've already detected 900 uh, cancers, lung cancers, 77% of them early stage. Now, if, we, if they hadn't been screened, it would have been 24% early stage. With a full rollout, we'll be detecting 6,500 uh, lung cancers in early stage, if that, that happens. So I'm trying to work out, uh, you know, maybe you pick up on this in a moment. I mean, judging by what you're saying, the evidence is uh, that this will work. You will detect more. So uh, why not, if, it, if the argument is not just, well, it's too expensive? Well, why not do it? Well, the, in, the, in the UK, we do have a UK National Screening Committee that have very tough standards for sanctioning screening because it is very costly. And, of course, a lot of people that you screen don't have cancer. Well, that's the whole nature of a screening programme. So you have to make sure that you don't harm the people that don't have cancer at all. So the cost is, is about benefit versus harm. I think that it's very clearly in favour of benefit. It's cost-effective, and we're hoping... Um, to get a, a recommendation soon from the UK National Screening Committee to go ahead with a full national programme. Is the only pushback cost? So the only, generally in the NHS, uh, we are cost limited. We have to think, well, if we spend a lot of money on this, then we have to take money from something else. Right. Uh, but I think for screening for lung cancer, it, the, the case is now proven, personally. Um, Fiona, t talk about your experience, because you were saying a moment ago that the, this date today of the launch is quite a significant one in relation to what Roy was doing. But is it tw how many years ago? It's tw nearly 28 years. Since and what he was he died. doing 28 years ago? Well, just before he died, he went on a tour around the country to raise awareness of lung cancer and the dangers of smoking. He did it on a train. And he went on a train around it's the country. It's called the Tour of Hope. And there'll be, there'll be people watching us, and I, you know, we all know who Roy was and what he did and, and what he represented. But he, he was so well known at the time, he was such a popular figure that when he started talking openly, and maybe he was one of the first who sort of did that, it made a real difference, didn't it? The conversation started to change around cancer. Yes, because nobody knew that, um, can, that, that lung cancer was to do with smoking in those days. I mean, well, they knew it was smoking, but, but somebody who didn't smoke... Passively it was, smoking. It was it, passive smoking, and there was no, only research being done, apparently, in America at that particular time. So they didn't, they didn't believe that Roy didn't smoke. Did you want to, <coughs> did you and Roy talk about being public about his illness? Well, he just felt that if there was a way of helping and, and helping other people and, and raising awareness that he'd no right to stay silent. So that was what exactly it, it got him is. going. That's a really interesting and way of, of, of putting it, isn't it? Did, did, similarly, I was going to ask, did you have the same sort James of conversation? James just said, I mean, his, his whole life was about helping people, hence why he went into politics. And the minute he got diagnosed, he made contact with the Roy Castle Lung Cancer Foundation and just said, what can I do? How can I help? Um, 
And as you said, David, he did. Um, and there's a decision to be made, though, isn't there, about exposing yourself when you're so ill? And he's, you know, with family and your children, and you know, your family is but struggling as well. They were already in the public eye, right? Um, both of them, both our husbands were already in the public but your eye. Fam the family and wasn't. Yeah, the family wasn't. And you weren't. As no, much. no. But you know, they're not here to. I'm more than happy to try and pick up where he left off because I know he was so passionate about it. Uh, we're not really talking about the politics here, but I mean necessarily, Kathy. You probably know a little bit about uh, the way politics works and how hard it can be <laughs> to get things done. I, I imagine you do. I mean, you, you've got some hurdles to get over here, uh, notwithstanding, you know, what, what the professor said about how, how good this would be. Maybe I'm in a bit of a new, unique place to try and help jump some of those hurdles. Who knows? I mean, time will tell, won't it? What does that mean? <laughs> Uh, we've got to get this national screening in place first, and if, if me and the, the, the story that James has gone through opens a few more doors to get through those hurdles quicker than what it may be. Are you sensing that already? I mean, it, it, there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, it, you know, because he the had... The feedback he was much... I'm getting from the, the charity, the Roy Cancer, uh, Roy Castle Lung Cancer Foundation charity, is it's helping me being on this platform, and that's good enough for me to keep going. Fiona, that must mean the world to you, mustn't it? It's having wonderful. Having Kathy on board. Yes, it's lovely, the two of us. Oh, it's, it's like we've <laughs> known each We've met literally a month ago and it's like we've known each other for years. We never stopped talking. <laughs> wow, it's a delight. Which is lovely because we, we're both passionate about what can be done. And I think if Roy had had a screening, he would have, they would have found it much earlier. But it was only through... A, 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 he had a very serious infection that um, nearly killed him that they started to look into what was actually happening, but it was nothing, that was nothing to do with it. Do you ever um, stop being surprised at the affection there is in this country for Roy Castle? I'm amazed that people remember him. The fact that you saying that you remember him always surprises me. He was a me. trumpeter, mm. and I was a trumpeter, ah. and he was a brilliant entertainer. Yeah. And, you, and we all grew up as well, didn't you, Professor? Did Absolutely, you? yeah. You, was, he was uh, just part of real, our lives. A real warm feeling every time yeah. you, yeah. you watch. Right? But you see, uh, now, I mean, 28 years on, a lot of people, anybody un under 35, wouldn't have a clue who he was. Well, we've shown we've shown yeah. video. We've spoken about James and Roy yeah. and the, their legacy. Yes, actually, the legacy that they've left. Um, and people, I can trust trust me, people will be going back and looking now because we've raved about them for good reason. Oh, thank you. Thank you both very much, yeah, Professor. Yeah. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks.